many years ago, I was asked a very interesting question. Somebody asked me a question, they raised their hand in the seminar and said, Tony, can you change people that don't want to change? Of course you can change people who don't want to change. All you need is the right kind of if you have enough leverage where change becomes an absolute. Now for some people, leverage is not even the threat of their own life. Some people rather die than have you tell them what to do. And so that's not the leverage. The leverage for them might be something for their children. Leverage for them might be spiritual growth. All of us have a leverage point. If you find the leverage, not the leverage you make someone do it, the leverage that will make them make themselves do it. We all have some place that will get us to fall through. Now, if you get enough leverage and if you interrupt the pattern enough, how many of you ever had a pattern when you were a kid and you had like some obnoxious uncle or something and you were trying to be upset and they'd come like rub your damn head or something that should make you crazy? And you couldn't stay upset because they kept doing this to you. How many had this happen? Say, I. If you have enough leverage and you break someone's pattern enough times, a new pattern will show up. If you're conscious, you can create the new pattern. So the answer is yes. Now then the question would be, Tony, if all it takes is leverage, then why don't most people change? And I had a lot of answers to that, but that night, I'm a night person. That night, I'm wired up after a seminar it's like 2 o'clock in the morning, it was December, and so I flip on the television in the back for some white noise looking for CNN, and I come across the old Christmas classic, this Christmas Carol, right, a Dickens classic, and I see it in black and white, and I start watching the movie, and I'm remembering it from being a kid, and as I'm watching this thing, I see this man named Scrooge, who clearly doesn't want to change. In fact, he's certain he doesn't need to change because what's happened is his life went through a lot of pain. And when he got pain, he looked for the source of that pain and he said it was being close to people. So we decided it's people equals pain. Remember the red squares we talked about? So now he wants to avoid people and he's mean to people. Now, he's also very wealthy financially. He makes up this belief that because I'm mean and tough with people, I'm rich. The truth is, he's financially rich. If you watch the movie, you read the story, when everybody else is gone, who's still working? He is. He's hardworking, he's thrifty, he's smart, he's intelligent, but he thinks he's rich because he's mean. So he doesn't want to lose being rich. He doesn't want to lose not being hurt. So there's a belief. Be mean to people and everything works out. Even though he's miserable. Can we have beliefs that make no sense and yet still believe them, yes or no? Sure, we just get wired. So I'm watching this guy. Now, the only way people change is if they associate either enough what? Pain, so they have to change, or they associate changing will equal enough what? And ideally, if you get both, you'll change. If you get, every moment I do this, the pain's getting more and more tense, there's a point where you must change. And if you get, if I change, I get all this pleasure, you're gonna want to change. How many follow? But what equals pain and what equals pleasure is what you associate in your nervous system. So what happens is, the only way you create change is changing what you link pain and what you link pleasure to in your nervous system, not just in your head, in your gut. That's what controls you. Lots of times in your head you know what you should do, but your gut takes over. Your fear, or your greed, or your desire, or your comfort, or whatever. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Say I. But watch this. How many of you used to have a favorite dessert, or a food, or a form of alcohol that you really, really, really loved? And then one night you had an experience like never before, where something happened, where this food, or this drink, or this alcohol that you love so much it went down, but it kept coming back up at a level of intensity and with enough aroma and pain and association that to this day,
It takes no willpower just to think about alcohol or think of the smell of that food or look at it makes you appalled, makes you repelled. Who's, who's had an experience like this in your life? Say, I. Tell me what that change was. Was that a change in willpower? No. All that happened is your brain changed what it used to link pleasure to and now link pain to. When you link enough pain, it takes no willpower. You're going to avoid it. The problem is some of you are linking pain to things you need, like exercise, right? Or pain what you need, like a relationship, right? And it's the wrong association, but it's going to control your life. Your job is to change what you link pain and pleasure to. So that night, what was pleasure became pain, and now it takes no willpower. You just avoid it. So we call that changing what you associate to things in your nervous system, or for short, short a neuroassociative change. In other words, changing in your neuro, your nervous system, what you associate pain and pleasure to. So, by the way, in this Christmas Carol story, does this man Scrooge change his life? Yes or no? He didn't want to change. Does he change his life a little or completely? And by the way, how fast? An heartbeat, in one evening, how does it happen? Three neuroassociative conditioning specialists show up at his house. Right? Three ghosts show up and what do they do? They get him to link a massive, unbearable amount of what? To all the things he did in the past around people. Then they go to everything he has in the present pain, everything in the future pain, till there's so much there was nowhere to escape. Here's the other reason why people don't change. Because right now my relationship's in pain, but it was good in the past. So you escape having a change by remembering a good time. Or I might be coughing and having these problems with cigarettes right now, but you know what? George Burns lived to be 102. He smoked cigars, by the way, and he's one out of 10 billion people that pulled that off. But let's not confuse ourselves with ratios. So you make up what the future is. If your present is painful, you can escape to the past and get out of the pressure to change. How many follow this? Say I. Or you can escape to a future because no one knows what it is for sure and you can make it up. But if your brain links, it's been painful in the what? Past, in the, and it's even worse in the, it'll change like that. Who here has ever stayed in a relationship that you knew was not right for you? It wasn't right for you, it wasn't right for them. Who has ever stayed in a relationship way too long? Who's done this before? Raise your hand. Say, I. It wasn't good for you. It wasn't good for them. Yet you stayed. Why? Why? Because even though it's painful in the present, what'd you do? You said, it'll get better over there in the future. Why? Who finally changed? Who here finally changed that? Say, I. How'd you do it? Your brain went, it's painful now. It was painful in the past. It's going to be worse in the future. That's it. That's what I call a Dickens pattern. When you lock in pain in all those places, there's no place to escape, so you change. It's like if you put a wall here, a wall here, and a wall here, and we close them in on you, amazingly, you'll move forward. That's what we're talking about, giving yourself leverage on yourself that way, not having someone else do it to you, you do it to yourself. That's when you got the power again. How many get it? Say I. This could be the greatest time you ever live if you control what you focus on, if you find a more empowering meaning, and if you decide to model the actions of those who succeeded before you. It can be the best financial time, the best emotional time, the best spiritual time of your life, but you better take control of your state. And if you think you're gonna do it just by today, you're wrong. You're gonna need to get yourself some rituals. Right now, every one of you in this room is controlled by your rituals. I don't just mean this one. I mean every morning you get up. I know your body. I can look at your body right now, and I can guess your rituals. Some of you, your rituals to work out five times a week, I can see it clearly. Four to six times a week, it's obvious. Because you couldn't look like that if you didn't do that. Some form of workout. I don't care if it's walking, lifting, whatever. Some of you, it's obvious that lifting weights is part of it. You can see by that man's muscles. I know, I know what his rituals are. Because your life comes from your rituals. If you don't develop the ritual, you're kidding yourself. How many agree with me on this? Raise your hand, say I. And there are rituals that put you in state and there are rituals that take you out of state. You have rituals in your relationship, you have rituals with your body, you have rituals around your finances, and the rituals that worked 
in the reaping time of fall in the markets and in business and in real estate, those rituals won't work now. If you do the right thing at the wrong time, you get pain. I'll say that again. If you do the right, you go, but Tony, I'm doing the right thing, but I'm not being rewarded. If you do the right thing at the wrong time, you don't get rewarded, you get pain. So you better do the right thing at the right time. And to do that, you better know what season you're in. And to do that, you better learn how to change your state, how to take control of your own conditioning. That's what I live for. Does this make sense to you, yes or no? Come on, guys, yes or no? So now it's time to train yourself to do that. I'll show you how fast it can change. Try this just for a second. I want to show you what you can do with just focus. Try this for a moment. I'm going to give you a test. Sit up in your chair with some energy. Make sure your buddy next to you is in a strong state. If or otherwise, adjust their state. Come on, change their physiology. What are they going to do? See if they're ticklish. That might help. Now do this. I want you to look around this room right now and find everything in this room that you can find that is brown as fast as you can. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look around you. Look for brown. Look for brown. Look for brown. Okay, close your eyes. I'm going to give you a test. With your eyes closed now, shout out loud everything you saw that was red. If you see a lot more brown right now than red, say yes. Open your eyes. Look for red now. I want you to really look for red. Look for red. Look for red. Look for red. Anything you can find that's red, look for red. All around you, look for red. Raise your hand if you found more red this time and say, I. Why did you find more red this time? Because seek and you shall, that's right. Whatever you focus on, you're going to find it. In fact, let me tell you something. You'll even find it when it's not there. How many saw burgundy called it red just so you could have more things you counted? Raise your hand and say, ah, come on. See, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find. So if you want to change your life, my friends, you've got to change your physiology and you've got to change your focus. By the way, how fast can you change that stuff? How fast, my friends? How fast? How fast? Come on. In a heartbeat, once you rechange your conditioning, that's all you got to do. And you can do it fast. You can do it with a question or two. Try this right now. Answer this question in your mind and be honest. What in your life today, if you wanted to be, could you feel proud about right now? If you wanted to feel proud, if you didn't feel like, I shouldn't be proud. If you wanted to feel proud, what could you be proud of in your life today? Your children, your health, your body. Is there a problem you faced? Instead of running from it, you finally stepped up and handled it. What could you feel proud of in your life today? If you wanted to feel proud. How many can think of something? And when you think about this thing you're proud of, what about that makes you feel proud? What do you focus on that makes you feel proud? How do you breathe when you really start to feel proud? What's the kind of look on your face that starts to happen when you let yourself feel proud? Yeah. How's that feel? Hmm. Think of another area of your life. Think of an area of your life that you're grateful for. Or if you are not grateful, if you wanted to be grateful, what's an area you could feel grateful for? What could you feel grateful for if you really wanted to feel grateful? How many can think of something you can feel grateful for? Let me see your hands. And what about that are you grateful for? What do you focus on that makes you feel grateful? How does it feel when you're really, truly feeling filled with gratitude? Here's one. If you wanted to be excited about your life right now, and you're willing to be excited, you're willing to buck everybody else's trend, what could you feel excited about in your life if you wanted to feel excited? What could you get excited about if you're really focused on it and you really took it in, and you weren't in a negative place, what could you get excited about if you wanted to be excited in your life? What could you get excited about? How many of you can think of something you feel excited about right now? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Say I. When you're really excited about it, what about that excites you? Or when you're really excited, how do you feel? How do you speak? What's your life like? By the way, when you're excited, does it tend to touch other people, yes or no? Absolutely. By the way, do people have a tendency, but who feels different right now than just even a couple moments ago? Raise your hand and say, I. Why? Because focus is controlled by questions. If you ask a different question continuously, not once, continuously, you will get a different answer. 
If you ask a lousy question, you get a lousy answer and a lousy state. Somebody says, why does this always happen to me? It doesn't always happen to you, but the brain's like a computer. Ask it a question, it'll have to come up with an answer. Because you deserve it, you idiot. Someone will say, how come I can never lose weight? You can lose weight, but if you keep saying, how come I can never lose weight, the brain's got to come and answer. It goes, you're a pig. Lousy questions create what? Lousy answers. Ask a better question, get a better answer. Now, here's what I want you to get. I want you to get that you can change your state. How fast, guys? How fast? How fast? And if you get the habit of doing it, you'll have a different life. Because what's happened is his life went through a lot of pain. And when he got pain, he looked for the source of that pain and he said it was being close to people. So we decided it's people equals pain. Remember the red squares we talked about? So now he wants to avoid people. And he's mean to people. Now, he's also very wealthy financially. He makes up this belief that because I'm mean and tough with people, I'm rich. The truth is, he's financially rich. If you watch the movie, you read the story, when everybody else is gone, who's still working? He is. He's hardworking, he's thrifty, he's smart, he's intelligent, but he thinks he's rich because he's mean. So he doesn't want to lose being rich. He doesn't want to lose not being hurt. So he has a belief. Be mean to people and everything works out. Even though he's miserable. Can we have beliefs that make no sense and yet still believe them, yes or no? Sure, we just get wired. So I'm watching this guy. Now, the only way people change is if they associate either enough what? Pain, so they have to change, or they get to this alcohol that you love so much, it went down, but it kept coming back up. At a level of intensity and with enough aroma and pain and association that to this day, it takes no willpower just to think of that alcohol or think of the smell of that food or look at it makes you appalled, makes you repelled. Who's, who's had an experience like this in your life? Say, I. Tell me what that change was. Was that a change in willpower? No. All that happened is your brain changed what it used to link pleasure to and now link pain to. When you link enough pain, it takes no willpower. You're going to avoid it. The problem is some of you are linking pain to things you need, like exercise, right? Or pain what you need, like a relationship, right? And it's the wrong association, but it's going to control your life. Your job is to change what you link pain and pleasure to. So that night, what was pleasure became pain, and now it takes no willpower. You just avoid it. So we call that change. How many of you ever had a pattern when you were a kid and you had like some obnoxious uncle or something and you were trying to be upset and they'd come like rub your damn head or something that should make you crazy and you couldn't stay upset because they kept doing this to you. How many had this happen? Say I. If you have enough leverage and you break someone's pattern enough times, a new pattern will show up. If you're conscious, you can create the new pattern. So the answer is yes. Now then the question would be, Tony, if all it takes is leverage, then why don't most people change? And I had a lot of answers to that, but that night, I'm a night person. That night, I'm wired up after a seminar. It's like two o'clock in the morning, it was December. And so I flip on the television in the back for some white noise, looking for CNN. And I come across the old Christmas classic, this Christmas Carol, right? A Dickens classic. And I see it in black and white, and I start watching the movie, and I'm remembering it from being a kid. And as I'm watching this thing, I see this man named Scrooge who clearly doesn't want to change. In fact, he's certain he doesn't need to change. Many years ago, I was asked a very interesting question. Somebody asked me a question, they raised their hand in the seminar and said, Tony, can you change people that don't want to change? Of course you can change people who don't want to change. All you need is the right kind of. 
if you have enough leverage where change becomes an absolute. Now for some people, leverage is not even the threat of their own life. Some people would rather die than have you tell them what to do. And so that's not the leverage. The leverage for them might be something for their children. Leverage for them might be spiritual growth. All of us have a leverage point. If you find the leverage, not the leverage you make someone do it, the leverage that will make them make themselves do it. We all have some place that will get us to follow through. Now, if you get enough leverage and if you interrupt the pattern and associate, changing will equal enough what? And ideally, if you get both, you'll change. If you get, every moment I do this, the pain's getting more and more tense. There's a point where you must change. And if you get, if I change, I get all this pleasure, you're gonna want to change. How many follow? But what equals pain and what equals pleasure is what you associate in your nervous system. So what happens is, the only way you create change is changing what you link pain and what you link pleasure to in your nervous system, not just in your head, in your gut. That's what controls you. Lots of times in your head, you know what you should do, but your gut takes over. Your fear, or your greed, or your desire, or your comfort, or whatever. Who knows what I'm talking about here? Say I. But watch this. How many of you used to have a favorite dessert, or a food, or a form of alcohol that you really, really, really loved? And then one night you had an experience like never before where something happened where this food or this drink